Hey Defenders, this is Doug Burks with Security Onion Solutions. Today we're going to do some quick malware analysis using a PCAP from Brad Duncan at MalwareTrafficAnalysis.net. I started Security Onion in 2008 to provide a free and open platform to help you peel back the layers of your enterprise and make your adversaries cry. Today, Security Onion has been downloaded over 2 million times and is being used by security teams around the world for threat hunting, enterprise security monitoring, and log management. If you're a blue teamer, make sure you hit that like button and make it turn blue. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to help us reach 6,000 subscribers. If you have any words of encouragement for the Security Onion team, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. For questions and problems, please go to securityonion.net slash discuss and start a new discussion there. If you want to follow along, you can download Security Onion from securityonion.net and perform an import installation in a virtual machine using the instructions at securityonion.net slash docs. So I've already created my virtual machine. I've installed the latest version of Security Onion and I've configured it for import mode. And so we're now ready to import a PCAP. And so we're gonna be using this new PCAP that was released August the 5th of 2021 by our good friend Brad Duncan at MalwareTrafficAnalysis.net. And so we're going to download this PCAP.zip file. So looking at what Brad has here on the page, he includes an image of what really starts this malware off, and that's an email, which includes an attachment of an Excel spreadsheet. And so when you open that Excel spreadsheet, it then uses macros to then run some code, and that then is really where this PCAP is going to pick up from. We're gonna to go to the terminal and we're going to unzip the zip file. That password is available at malwaretrafficanalysis.net. And so now we have the PCAP itself. So we're ready to run SO import PCAP. So now SO import PCAP is running that PCAP through Suricata to generate alerts, and then it's running it through Zeek to generate protocol metadata. Then it's gonna take all of those logs, the Suricata alerts and the Zeek logs, and send them to Elasticsearch so that we can then log into our web interface and we can take a look at those alerts, we can take a look at those Zeek logs using our web interface called Hunt, and we'll be able to kind of reconstruct the scene of the crime and see what happened from start to finish. So here we are logged into Security Onion console and we're looking at the alerts page and we see that we do have some alerts here. Again, these alerts were generated by Suricata as it analyzed that PCAP file. So we see that we have three alerts that are considered malware, they're in the malware category. And we have one alert that's in the policy category and that's for a Windows EXE. So this is a nice high level overview of the different kinds of alerts that we have. If we wanna see a little bit more detail, we can switch our view from this default view to the ungrouped view. And so that's gonna show us not only those rule names that we saw before, but also the timestamps and the IP addresses and port information and things like that. And so the first thing that we should take a look at here is the fact that we have four alerts, but if we look at the IP address and port pairs, we can tell that the first three alerts are actually for the same exact TCP stream. So in other words, you can see that this first alert is from source port 51499 going to destination port 80, and the same thing for this third alert, 
Notice that the second alert is kind of the reverse of that. So the source port is 80 and the destination port is 51499. And what that really means is that this particular IDS rule was actually written to look for a response from the server. And so therefore the server is seen as the source IP and that's why this appears to be flipped compared to the first and third alert. But all three of these alerts are for the same exact TCP stream. The fourth alert is for a separate TCP stream, and that's on destination port 51487. Again, this is looking for return traffic from the web server, and that's why the web server is seen as the source IP, and the source port is port 80. And so we have two different TCP streams here, and if we think about from a port perspective, we see that 51487 comes before 51499. And if we look at the timestamps, that confirms the fact that this alert down here, the fourth alert, actually came first because it was at 1338. And these three alerts up here were at 1339. So if we wanted to start our review, we might start with this particular alert since it was the earliest timestamp that we had. So we could drill into this alert by clicking this arrow and that's going to expand it and show us all of the fields within the alert. So one of the things that we might want to do first is take a look at the rule that generated the alert. And so this is looking for a content match of MZ. That's what you expect to see is the file header for a Windows EXE. And so this is looking for a Windows executable over HTTP. Pretty simple rule. And if we look at the little bit of payload that's included in the alert, we see that we are looking at HTTP traffic and we do see the MZ file header and this program cannot be run in DOS mode so that does appear to be a Windows executable or PE file. Now if we wanted to see the entire TCP stream uh, as opposed to just the snippet of payload that's included in the alert, of course we could click on this, go down to actions and then go to PCAP. And that would show us a packet by packet overview of that TCP stream. Now, if I click these two buttons, I get a nice ASCII transcript, which makes it a little bit easier to read what actually happens. So we see that there's an HTTP head request for an EXE. The web server responds with a 200 OK. And then an HTTP GET request for that same EXE file. The web server responds with a 200 OK, and then there's our MZ file header, and this program cannot be run in DOS mode. Because we have full packet capture, of course, we could download that PCAP, and then we could extract the EXE if we wanted to do reverse engineering on the EXE. So now let's go back, and because we looked at our first TCP stream, let's take a look at our second TCP stream, which had these three different alerts associated with it. So we have three alerts. One is for a client check-in, one is for a server response, and both of those are related to Azeroult. So Azeroult client check-in, Azeroult server response, and then the third is for a generic post to PHP with extended ASCII characters, which is likely a Zeus derivative. So again, we could drill into each of these alerts, and we might want to take a look at the rule first. And so this is a client check-in. We have some, we're looking for a, a content match of post and some very specific hexadecimal content matches and Perl compatible regular expressions here. And so if we look at our network data decoded field, there we do see we are looking at an HTTP post method and we do see this string of traffic which matches the regular expression and the hexadecimal content match. So that's why that alert fired. Now if we were to look at our second alert here, again looking at the rule first, we have a hexadecimal content match followed by another hexadecimal content match. And so that's very specific server response Let's take a look at what was included here. So here we can see kind of the, the web server's response of 200 OK. And then 
this chunk of text and somewhere in there it would have matched what that rule was looking for. Finally, we take a look at the third alert. And if we look at the rule first, this is looking for a content match of post, a content match of .php, a content match of MSIE, and then we have this blob here. So if we look at our network data decoded, uh, we do have lots of interesting text there. So putting all of that together, we said that all three of those alerts were for the same TCP stream. So if I wanted to take a look at that entire TCP stream, I could click on one of these alerts, go to Actions, and then go to PCAP. And there we would see the entire TCP streams from start to finish in a nice ASCII transcript format. So we could see that we're doing an HTTP post to index.php. And this is to an HTTP host in a foreign country. We do see that there's this interesting string of text here that's being posted to this remote web server. And then the web server responds uh, with that kind of server response that one of those IDS alerts was looking for. So that's a brief overview of the alerts that were generated by Suricata for this particular PCAP file. Now, it's always a good idea to be thinking about how could we detect this kind of activity if we were dealing with a sophisticated adversary that was able to evade our IDS rules and not generate any IDS alerts, how could we have detected some of this activity? And that's really where our hunt interface comes into play. So if we go to hunt, we see by this default query that we do have 20 logs that were generated by this PCAP. And we have lots of queries that are built into hunt. So if we click this drop down box, we can go to group by event module and event data set. And this kind of gives us the, the types of logs that we have. We can see that we have some Suricata alerts, which we already looked at. But beyond those Suricata alerts, we have some Zeek logs. And there's a few different kinds of Zeek logs. We have some file logs, connection logs, HTTP logs, DNS logs, and PE logs. And so that's going to kind of give us a roadmap for how we might look through or hunt through these different Zeek logs. And so again, going to our list of default queries here, what we might start with is our Zeek connection logs. And we've got a few different queries here for our Zeek connection logs. So we could look at connections grouped by IP and port. And so what we see there is not just the two TCP streams that we saw before in the alerts, but we also see some DNS connections. So we have two DNS connections from our workstation at 10.8.5.101 to our DNS server at 10.8.5.1. Next, we might take a look at our DNS queries. And so there we see a nice list of the actual DNS queries that were looked up in our against our DNS server. Now let's move on and take a look at files. And so here we can see this is another way to find that there was a Windows EXE that was transferred uh, in this network traffic. So now let's actually look at our HTTP logs. And so we've got a few different queries here for HTTP logs. We've got HTTP grouped by destination port, and all of that traffic is on port 80, so no non-standard ports there. We could look at HTTP logs grouped by status code and message. We see that all of those logs resulted in an HTTP status code of 200 and a message of OK. Then we could look at HTTP logs grouped by method and user agent. And so there we can see that a good deal of our HTTP traffic is going to be HTTP GET requests. But we do also see some POST methods here and that head method that we saw before when we were looking at the IDS alert. But we also see that there's kind of a difference here between user agents, right? Because the get and the head, and that was the initial download of the EXE, that was done using 
a user agent of Microsoft Bits 7.5, whereas that check-in to that command and control server was done using this user agent here. We could look at HTTP logs grouped by virtual host. And there again, we would see those two foreign web servers and two connections to each of them. Finally, we could take a look at our PE logs, and this is where Zeek is identifying portable executables or Windows executable files being transferred across our network. This has been a very quick malware analysis using Security Onion. If you'd be interested in more in-depth analysis, take a look at our Security Onion training classes at securityonionsolutions.com training. We do have a free on-demand course on YouTube that you can go through there. And we have additional classes as well. We have a four-day training class coming up in Augusta, Georgia, leading up to our annual Security Onion conference. If you sign up for that four-day training class, you get a free non-transferable ticket to both Security Onion Conference and B-Sides Augusta. Finally, if you want to monitor and defend your own enterprise network, check out our Security Onion appliances at securityonionsolutions.com slash hardware.